Okay, so it's time for my What Am I Sewing and Growing video for February and I'll do a preview for March as well. I'm looking at my database on, my, on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop or web browser. And it's really great, I use it all the time. You can get a copy of it for yourself uh, and you can modify it to your heart's content. All the instructions are in the description down below. Or you can just look at what I'm looking at. In fact, a slightly more comprehensive version than the summary that I'm going to show in this video. I like to start with just looking at what I've planted in January. So this is kind of the growing part of the video. And I'll start with the Asian greens. So put in Komatsuma, Red Stem Patra and Tatsoi and put those in, uh, oh, I don't know, like two or three weeks ago, something like that, really little plants. But they will grow on strongly through February and hopefully I'll get some sort of harvest in sort of late March, sort of April time. A nice sort of continuous harvest after the polytunnel ones. And I've also put in quite a few cabbages. Um, again, kind of experiment a little bit with my cabbages. Um, in fact, the red marks in the uh, guide are the things that I want to draw particular attention to. So particularly the Savoy cabbages, I've never tried doing this kind of start them in December, plant them out in January, hoping for a sort of early harvest in late spring, early summer. But, you know, you know if you don't try things, you won't learn things. And when you sort of grow in year round, you, there's no books really that tell you what to do. You, you've just got to experiment. Well, there is a book actually, it's my book. Uh, and there's a link to that down in the description and it's free. Also just put in some spring cabbages, uh, but mainly be harvesting those spring greens. So now we come to sort of my main effort really in uh, January, which is to get all the overwintered brassicas or as many as I can planted out. So I have to be a little bit careful because I'm still harvesting from those beds. So generally what I'm doing is I'm taking one plant out and putting a cauliflower or a calabrese in, in the gap that I create and then gradually taking more plants out. So I'm doing that with my uh, Claytonia in the greenhouse and I'm doing that with the spinach beds uh, in some of my cold frames. I find it always works really nicely because obviously the calabrese or cauliflowers they don't take up very much space to start off with uh, and then gradually as uh, the months progress I don't need the spinach because spinach goes crazy in early spring uh, and so I can take all the spinach out and just leave the cauliflowers and calabrese to carry on and I really like doing it that way uh, with the overwintering because it just means that I get this really abundant hungry gap. It's easy to grow in summer, but it's not easy to grow over winter in spring uh, in sort of that transition hungry gap, sort of mid spring to early summer. So you do have to play a few tricks and I like doing that. So next up, I'm doing my, planted my kales for sort of mid spring. So I don't normally bother with the succession at that time of year because I'm generally eating the ones that I put in sort of in summer last year. But because we had this greenhouse put in, basically all my kale beds were taken out to make space for this greenhouse. So uh, yeah, so I'm just happy to sort of put an extra succession of kales in. But anyway, dwarf green curly kale, reflex kale, Nero black magic, uh, Pentland brig, they're all looking quite nice and I'm hoping that they'll be ready sometime in sort of late March, early April. And you might remember if you watched my videos that I lost all but one of my broad beans to mice. So I've just put new broad beans in uh, to replace them. And I also lost pretty much all of the field beans to um, mice as well. So I planted two batches of field beans, one just out there in the kitchen garden and one on the allotment. We really like field beans. If you eat a lot of spinach, you'll know that spinach has got a lot of oxalic acid in it. You can't eat too much of it uh, if you're sensitive to oxalic acid. Not everybody is. Um, and so it's a good idea, I think, to kind of go half and half spinach and something else that's low in oxalic acid and for us that's field bean tips so we eat a lot of spinach in spring um, but we um, 
you know, so we moderate it by mixing in uh, field beans or just substituting field beans. They work in pretty much the same way and they're a really fantastic crop and I've got a video all about those if, if you want to find that on my channel. And then I've also put in my peas. So I've got one little batch of peas just behind me here uh, that will stay in here until April and I'll need that space obviously then for higher value crops. Um, but I've also put some into the low tunnels. These two crops will sort of come ready towards the end of April, kind of early May, something like that for harvest. Um, yeah, I, I love, I just love peas, you know, for me, that first taste of pea, it's a very summery sort of taste, you know, nice and sweet, and come about the same time as strawberries, so really they're the first taste of summer for me. Um, planted a few radish, my earliest radish, I don't do a huge amount of radish now, um, I find because I've got club root on my plot, it's difficult to kind of scatter radish around all over the place. So I have to just concentrate in a few areas where I don't have club root. And uh, so I just do a few batches. These have gone in the polytunnel and they're kind of interplanted into the beds where eventually the calibrees will sort of take over and take up all this all the bed space. And just some lettuce. So uh, yeah, always planting lettuce. So we eat a big salad basically every every day <laughs> every day of the year and uh, so we need to plant a lot of lettuce so we have a lot of other things in our lettuce other than lettuce oh, we have a <laughs> we have a lot of things in our salads other than lettuce but lettuce is kind of always the sort of salad base I guess you would say now you might notice that in this guide if you go and have a look at it uh, in more detail uh, I'll pop the link down below what you'll see is that I have now got information on the follow-on crop. So I always think it's quite useful because I do so many successions for you to get an idea as to what I'm following every crop with. And I try to get at least three, sometimes as many as five successions out of every bit of bed space that I've got. And this is how I do it, being aware of how long everything takes and what I'm going to replace it with. So that is everything for uh, that I've got planted. So now I'm going to look at, oh, let's just have a quick look around this, poly, this greenhouse so we can kind of see the things that we've still got growing. So I've still got a lot of lettuce down here. In fact, all of these down here are all salad ingredients. And I've got some in my hanging basket still. And basically, you know, I haven't had to touch these yet but I will start clearing these because I need this space pretty soon for all of my early potatoes uh, and sort of early courgettes and all of that sort of thing. So yeah, so basically by the end of February, all of this bed down here will all be cleared. Those few little brassicas down the end there, uh, they'll have been planted out. And so all of that will start to be potatoes and then tomatoes and cucumbers and um, courgettes and etc. So tomatoes. So down here I've got all my little seedlings. Quite a lot of these are just ready to uh, plant out. So here I've got my lettuce that's ready to go out. Tatsoi not quite ready to go out. Uh, these um, beetroot, there's four different varieties of beetroot there. One of them didn't germinate, these here. But apart, apart from that all those others will be going out next week into the polytunnel. These are my peppers. These aren't in this greenhouse. It's too cold in this greenhouse at the moment for peppers because it's not heated. Um, and so those are still inside the house, keeping nice and warm above 11 degrees centigrade. And I've just got next little succession of rascals there. And my first onions down there, which are doing okay. A little bit of burn on the very tips of these, but I generally just snip that off uh, before I plant them. I've got my first leeks there as well. And I've also just put my uh, shallots, red sun, and the golden gourmet up there. So they germinate uh, and start growing. I'll plant those out towards in February probably, uh, or even early March, depends how they go. But uh, 
I think I prefer to start them in module trays there, and I've just got a few little bits and pieces. So, what's going on in February? Right, I just want to interrupt myself for a few seconds, just tell you about my newsletter. As you're watching this, you see there's a lot of stuff to keep track of, you know, and keeping track of all that I think can be quite a challenge. Everything's in my ebook. But my ebook is huge, you know, I don't know how big it is, like 500, 600 pages, something like that. And so what you really need is you need something to give you just the information that you need at the time that you need it. And so that's what the newsletter is trying to achieve. So it is trying to sort of say, this is what to sow this week. This is what to plant, you know, this is what to prick out. This is what to put on, this is what to plant. This is what we're currently harvesting this week, etc., etc. So all of that sort of information, but also the kind of information you need as to what to prune when, what sort of diseases will start to make an appearance at what times, you know, all of that sort of you know topical information at your fingertips with links to all the relevant videos. I've got a thousand plus videos, so links to the appropriate videos at the appropriate time as well as links to the appropriate chapters of my books at the appropriate time. And of course, all those chapters of books have got loads more videos and all that sort of thing. So I really like the newsletter. I'm really enjoying writing it. I'm getting some lovely feedback about it. And it is free to subscribe, although you can donate if you want. Let's get back to the video. First up, I'm going to talk about the alliums. In fact, I just mentioned that I've restructured the way that I do these guides now. I'm not going to talk about them in date order, I'm going to talk about them in family order. So I'm going to talk about the alliums first, and I'm going to talk about the Asian greens, etc. etc. So I think it's easier to kind of get a handle on what's going on. Uh, and then if you look down below at the guides, they will be in date order. Okay, so hopefully that works better. Alliums first. So I'm going to do Long Red Florence and Zabrun. These are kind of the banana shallots, the really an onion, I suppose. Um, as I said, I've got my Golden Gourmet and my Red Sun shallots. They're just starting off, they're true shallots. And then I've got my first succession of Carmen onions and Red Baron onions that I'm planting at salad onion density as a germination test. So I'm obviously going to eat them, but I want to just germination test my main crop onion varieties. Last year, I really loved eating the thinnings from the main crop onion bed as salad onions. So I'm just going to do that um, uh, this year as well. But I'm just going to do dedicated sowings for them. They were just, I don't know, they were just better than most salad onions, to be honest. So I thought, why not? I've got enough seeds. Um, so that is all my alliums. So that's all my main crop onions. I'll be basically showing my main crop onions on the 14th of February. Nothing magical about the date of the 14th. Uh, it's just the middle of the month. And um, yeah, that's just the way I do it. I know loads of people have done the onions ages ago. I don't know why they do that, to be honest. I mean, there may be some reason and they can explain that for themselves, but from my experience, the middle of February is absolutely fine. I've had my best harvests of onions when I've sown them at that date. There's never been an issue with the size of them, the size of the harvest or anything like that. So I just stick in with what I know. Although, as I said, I've got these early onions here. Um, you know, I, I like to try and keep my mind open as to see whether, um, you know, I could be doing something better. So I'm trying a few. Um, now we'll come on to the Asian greens. And so these Asian greens are going to go into the polytunnel after lettuce. So once I've got my other lettuce beds up and running, I can clear the polytunnel lettuces. By then they're a bit old. They're the winter varieties. They're not my favorite spring varieties. Uh, so I want to take those out eventually, you know, basically by the time these are ready, which is kind of the end of March. Um, and then I've still got plenty of time from planting these at the end of March to get harvest from them before I need the space for my tomatoes and French beans and things like that that are going in the polytunnel. Um, so I'm doing tatsoi, I'm doing komatsuma, I'm doing red stem patchouli, I'm doing red tatsoi. So 
that's a nice little selection. And then we come on to the brassicas that I'm doing in February. And I'm doing one batch a quarter of my collets in the hope that they will be ready that little bit earlier. I only need six plants to be ready early. Uh, I'm quite happy for my others to come at their natural pace, which is kind of depends on the when they're really between sort of, sort of December time and at the end of January. Um, but it's nice to have a few, just that little bit earlier. So just a few of them, just 25%. And again, that also acts as a germination test. I like to do the germination tests. I don't like my main crop sowing dates to be pushed back by two or three weeks because I have to go and source some more seeds and get them planted, so get them sown. So I'm also doing my first succession this year of um, savoy cabbage and graffiti cauliflowers. Uh, I love the graffiti cauliflowers, the purple ones. I've got loads of them in the ground already uh, for an earlier harvest, but these are, will be ready, you know, sort of June time, something like that. Um, I'm hoping that they're not much later than June because I've got quite a lot of things uh, for, that are going to follow on after those. Uh, things like my late beetroot for storage. Um, anyway, same with the cabbage, uh, savoy cabbage, same sort of time, so early July probably for those. And then I've got my first batch of red drumhead and red fugo red cabbages. And for this year, I'm trying this red Loren uh, Ladero. I should wear my glasses really. <laughs> it's a bit tricky to read some of these things, but anyway, I don't like wearing glasses on video. Um, anyway, they are going to go in this big bed down here, um, interplanted in between the garlics and planted down there where the salad onions and the uh, lamb's lettuce are. And they're just my first succession basically, are red cabbage and uh, I'll have another succession in March. And then I generally, generally don't do another succession after that. We love our red cabbages though, and we like to keep them going as long as possible. In fact, I've still got one in here um, in, in the greenhouse, which I'll be eating in sort of late February. Then it comes on to the Mikado spinach. So I don't generally do my, um, tr my Asian spinach too early. I find that if you do, it takes ages to get going, unlike true spinach, which is really fast growing in the spring. Uh, so I do put, push it back, sort of, you know, almost to March before I put my first succession of Mikado in. But I love Mikado spinach. It's not really, it's quite a bit different to a true spinach. It's got much thicker, kind of more succulent leaves to it. Uh, it really is lovely. Uh, it's definitely worth trying if you haven't tried it before. And then I'm doing my first cucumbers. So don't do cucumbers this early. Uh, sort of middle of February, unless you can grow them in a conservatory or you can afford to heat your greenhouse to uh, 11 degrees centigrade in, uh, in March. But for me, it's worth it for an early crop. Um, you know, cucumbers are pretty expensive and organic cucumbers are even more expensive. So I like, uh, I like it, they're a nice fun thing as well and grandkids love to pick them and all that sort of thing. And I'll do another succession of those in March. And then, whole load of um, sugar snap and well it doesn't really matter any pea basically for shoots and they're going to go out there in that bed there where the parsnips currently are by the time they germinate and all harvested that bed of parsnips i'll only have one bed of parsnips left and yeah so then you would also do broad beans i'm not going to do any more broad beans because i've got plenty of broad beans now but uh, if you wanted to start your broad beans now would be a good time to start them and then we come on to the peppers now i have got my peppers here my early ones these are the ones that are going to go down here on a little bench underneath these grow lights in april and it's april when i start heating this greenhouse I talk about that as if I've had this greenhouse for ages, but no, it's my plan to start them down here on this grow, on one of these benches, just like this. Um, yeah, in April. I'm gonna start, as I said, heating this greenhouse at night, so it's above, or thereabouts, 10 degrees centigrade, 
and if it gets really cold, I don't think I can heat this greenhouse to 10 degrees centigrade, certainly not cost effectively, if it's like minus two or minus three outside. So in that case, I'll just take them inside and pop them into the, um, into the conservatory. But we don't actually have that many really cold nights in April, and certainly not in May. We'll have a few frosts, but not very many. So I think I can cope. Um, and it'll be the same with the tomatoes as well. But anyway, these are the early ones. I probably won't leave them in here for the whole of summer. I'll probably put them out on the patios by the walls. Um, but I might leave a few, I haven't decided yet. Anyway, I'm starting my, not my early ones, my main crop um, peppers, and I'm doing two successions. I'm doing one right at the beginning of February, basically the 1st of February, and one about three weeks later, so about the 21st of February. So two batches, and the reason I do two batches is just down to space under the grow lights. So I don't want, you know, if I, if I do it this way, I can just about manage to fit everything in. Uh, if I did them all at once, you know, all at the beginning of February, I wouldn't be able to cope. So I am doing Long Yellow Ringo, New Ace, Red King, Sweet, uh, sorry, Akron, uh, Bright Star and Lemon something or other. Uh, what's a lot? Lemon Dream. So quite a nice selection of different colours. I've got yellow, I've got orange, red. Yeah, so nice. Um, they will go under grow lights though. Starting them this late I find it's better under, better under grow lights and they will get planted out in under my low tunnels in late May. It's a nice time in that, late May, you can get a lot of other crops growing to maturity, generally two successions of crops uh, through winter crop and then a spring crop and then your peppers and then another crop in autumn. So uh, yeah, makes the low tunnels really, really productive. And uh, I put about five plants per square meter. Pay potatoes. So I'm quite excited to be starting my potatoes. I've only really got chitted my earlies at the moment. I don't bother chitting my main crops. They're still in the dark in boxes. But my early ones, I've got some chitting in the house where it's warm under grow lights to sort of accelerate the chitting process because I'm going to be planting those out right at the beginning of February. And I'm going to be doing Swift and Charlotte's. So the reason that I do Swift and Charlotte is because the Charlotte will come about four weeks later than the Swift. So, but we prefer the taste of Charlotte. So we start some Swift off, so we get a really nice early harvest, and then we get Charlotte's a few weeks later, and then we'll do another batch of Swift and another batch of Charlotte's. I'm also doing some Jazzy as well. And the reason I'm doing those Jazzy is that they, if you leave them in the pots for a long time, they still hold really well, they still taste really good. So they're a good one if we end up having too many potatoes and we just have a few tubs that are left, uh, you know, maybe for 120 days or something like that, then the jazzy will still taste really good. Um, yeah, so what you'll find is me doing basically two batches a month of potatoes, small batches. I always recommend don't do, don't do large batches of potatoes this early in the year. Just do the minimum that you need to eat for the, that week, basically. I do mine in two weekly batches, but you know, the number you need to eat for that two week period, because the later ones that you put in are gonna be so much bigger and so much better than the early ones that you put in. So it just makes sense not to overdo it. Another batch of radish, and then we come on to the carrots. So I'm still doing my early carrots in containers in February. I don't put them in the ground. I find germination's too dodgy in the ground. Um, and you, you, know, you end up with small, small numbers of poor germinated carrots if you do them too early. But in containers, in the, started in the polytunnel, they'll germinate really nicely. I put them outside in April. 
Um, on top of my IBC tanks for nice and high up here, away from carrot fly. And yeah, and these will follow on. So these should be ready about June. They will follow on from my early carrots, which I started back in the end of October. And I've got four big containers of those and they will be ready in May, sort of late April, early May. They'll see us all the way through May and into sort of early June. Then these carrots that I start in February will be ready. And then the next batch of beetroot. So I did mention I've got my beetroot here, uh, my early beetroot. That's going to keep us going for ages uh, from starting off harvesting little beetroot, sort of this sort of size in May from the polytor. And then we'll just leave those to grow and grow and grow. You know, probably get to about this sort of size. And by the time that about that sort of size, my next batch of beetroot will be ready. And I generally plant my February harvest of beetroot at the back of the low tunnels that I'm going to put my peppers in. Um, and then lettuce. Well, we're sowing lettuce. Lots of varieties here. Flashy butter oak, Grenoble red, uh, Riccia, Canasta, Navara, and Lolo, Rossa. And my last, I think, mid-February, my last batch of true spinach. So I'm gonna do Santa Cruz and Rubino. I might not be right about that, we'll see when we get to March, whether I actually do put any more spinach in. But because I've got the Asian spinaches coming, and because those Asian spinach, they're less likely to bolt than a true spinach, then um, yeah, they do better. But Santa Cruz is meant to be quite resistant to bolting as well, so I might be tempted to do later sowings of Santa Cruz. We'll see how that goes. And then my first batch, 1st of February, first batch of tomatoes. I'm doing red profusion, it's an F1. It's notoriously, notorious, maybe not known for being early. Um, so I'm doing that in preference to Tumblr. Tumblr is my favorite uh, tomato, uh, cherry tomato for hanging baskets and containers. But yeah, we tried, trialed red profusion last year, it did really nicely. So I'm gonna put it in these hanging baskets. And I've got uh, five or six of those. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm really excited about it. This is way earlier than I've ever done tomatoes before. I'm gonna start them in the house. I don't use a propagator for anything. I don't have a propagator. Um, but I just start mine on a windowsill above um, a radiator and that's fine. Everything germinates just fine there. Um, and yeah, and then I'll grow them on in the conservatory until they're sort of reasonably big plants of this sort of size, probably. Um, and then I will pop them on with just one per hanging basket and bring them in here in April. April is when I start heating this in here and I'll heat in here for about six weeks and then hopefully everything should be fine after that. And again, if it got really cold, so that I didn't believe I could keep this significantly above freezing, I would just move them into one of my sheds or something like that for the night. So that is it. That is what I'm sowing in February. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.